I am the world's biggest fan of Stranger Things and this is the story of how I met this Stranger Things actor, got him to sit down for an interview with me and got him to answer every question I ever wanted. Millie, I think, was very surprising to me. I went and filmed Stranger Things and it was this huge thing and then I came back and then it was nothing. What are the chances that you could set me up that I can meet Millie Bobby Brown? <laughs> oh gosh. I have been a fan of Stranger Things since day one. Like honestly, I'm obsessed with the show. Like I've watched it a ridiculous amount of times. Well, back in July, 2021, I had just posted my third YouTube video and was feeling pretty good about it. Whenever some guy named Tristan Spoon left a nice comment, it seemed he was also making similar videos on his YouTube channel and he suggested that we speak on a Zoom call. He seemed like a pretty nice guy, so I thought I'd check him out. Little did I know what was about to happen. <laughs> we got to speaking and he told me all about his acting career and how he got into the film industry and YouTube. And you know, he just casually dropped that, oh yeah, I was cast in this little show called Stranger Things. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm not joking. My heart started racing and my armpits began excessively sweating. Yeah, dude, I have no idea how the, uh... I was just trying to make a YouTube video. I wasn't expecting this motherfucker to be from Stranger Things. Keep in mind, this was nearly a year ago. He had already been cast in the show and had filmed all his scenes. He just had to keep it a secret between now and then. And yet here he was telling me just some random guy on the internet. Maybe he was lying. I had no way of verifying what he was saying. Maybe he's just some compulsive liar who goes around telling people he's in their favorite TV show. I don't fucking know. But a few months down the road, he got cast in an FBI show based in New York. So it was at least true he was an actor, and a really good one at that. It was now extremely likely he was telling the truth about being in Stranger Things. Now Stranger Things 4 is finally releasing, or part one is anyway, I wanted to sit down with Tristan again, ask him how he got cast in Stranger Things, and what he believes his secret is to success. How are you doing, man? I am interesting. How are you doing? You're interesting. Well, I'm even more interesting. Just kidding. No, I'm not. You're kidding. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, clearly I was a little nervous for this. I love that you're wearing your Los Angeles sweater, by the way. That was such a good video. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I know. I saw your comment on it. Yeah, you, you were one of the main inspirations for it. Obviously, you're in the video. Uh, that's great. Thank you for the appreciation. So yeah, I guess just tell me, I, how did you start? How, from the moment you decided you wanted to be an actor, uh, to being cast in, you know, a massive show. Uh, if you can tell me just a kind of a synopsis of that story and kind of all the struggles along the way. It was an interesting thing. I, I always wanted to be a football player going up to the point where I would just tackle myself to the ground in the front yard playing all these imaginary football games growing up. And that's what I did in high school. And then just on a whim, I started making these random cringy YouTube videos back when I was in middle school, I think. And I just, I really loved the ability to just express myself in some type of way. My mom wanted me to sit out one practice because she was worried about the Ebola pandemic. <laughs> I sat out one practice and in that one time I sat out, I realized how much I'd grown to hate football, and so I just never went back to practice again. Went to a performing arts high school in Dallas, Texas, where I got more into it, to the point where I decided that's what I wanted to do with my life, so I moved to Los Angeles. Then, of course, I was so busy trying to work and trying to make a living for myself that I ended up not really acting for pretty much the entire time I was out there. And it was funny because I didn't get my first agent until the month I had decided to leave to go back to Texas, which was interesting timing. So I was getting taping requests um, for small co-star roles, guys pretty much named Random Fuck Boy. Gradually, it kept increasing and increasing in the sense of then I would randomly get a guest star role where I was just going to be in one episode and then after that I'd audition for a recurring guest star role and then eventually I was auditioning for supporting and different movies and then eventually series regulars and leads of movies and what was interesting is that it was this natural progression but it was progressing when I wasn't booking anything like I wasn't getting any traction I wasn't getting any callbacks I was just getting bigger opportunities so it was this really weird thing the big thing that I booked, I guess ST, I, I, I still feel weird saying it out loud, but the big thing I booked was actually the first thing I I booked in like two years. Like the first thing I even got a callback for, I think. Like I only got one callback in the span of two entire years. And I've been reading for a crap ton of stuff, probably like 200 auditions. Out of your whole journey, what has been 
your one biggest lesson along the way and what you would say is your biggest key for anyone's success? There's two ways I can answer this question. One of them is, of course, self-compassion. And, and that's like the typical thing that everybody says, but it's one of those things where it's so easy to give up when we don't have any self-compassion because everything just piles on top of the other. And I specifically will feel guilty of assigning myself this label of being a failure because I didn't do this or this or this or that. And I think having the self-compassion of being like, well, okay, I didn't do everything I wanted to do today, but that doesn't mean I'm a failure of a human being and will never have success again. I think that it's it's all about finding a way to treat our ourselves better so that we can bounce back when the hard stuff happens because it's going to inevitably happen and the more to use my word again the more malleable we are even with ourselves and our expectations the easier it is to bounce back i guess never give anybody too much power as well because when i was in la part of the reason it took me so long to get an agent is because I had another agent string me along for like six or seven months. So one of my friends had referred me to an agent that he was with and he had a couple of relatively big clients on his roster. So I took that as meaning he was this awesome agent that would give me so much opportunity. And I was so needy and, and desperate for any anything at that point that I, I just, I ate everything out of his hand, not literally, but it was this thing where every single time I'd go to him, he'd be like, hey, I love your look. You're a super cool guy. Come see me next season and I'll definitely sign you next season. Uh, just get your acne cleared up and then and then you should be good to go because no one's going to hire you if you have acne. Next season would roll around and it would be the exact same thing. He's like, oh, your skin's looking good. Yeah. Um, so come see me next season. I'm not ready to sign you yet, but I will definitely sign you the next season. And then it took me a bit to finally just realize, oh, he's just going to call me back next season, next season. And I gave them so much power and I devalued myself and it prevented me from looking anywhere else. I didn't even submit to any agents because I was so sure that I was going to sign with him. The other thing I would say too is to not spend so much time worried about what other people are thinking or saying. And that's something everybody knows, but I can specifically relate it to an identity crisis I had. So I went and filmed Stranger Things and it was this huge thing and I was so fucking excited about it, right? And while I was filming, I got another audition to be another like series regular role on this show that I actually got pinned for and right of first refusal. And then the show got canceled. And then I came back and then it was nothing. It was like, I came back from Atlanta and then it was just nothing for like three, four months almost until eventually I booked FBI like five or six months later. But because of how secret the show was, I wasn't allowed to talk about it. And I hated it for so long because what I was telling myself is, no, I need to use this so I can book other things. Really, I just wanted everybody to think I was a serious actor, to think that I was this super successful, cool guy. But it was a blessing that I wasn't able to announce it until so late because it forced me to stop doing things for approval and to stop doing things based off how I think other people would react and only do it based off of what fulfills me. The lesson that ultimately ties into is realizing that there's no point in leading our lives in the direction that somebody else is trying to put on us because most often they're not actually putting a direction on us. We're just projecting a direction we think they're putting on us because everyone's so focused on themselves as it is. Like when we leave this Zoom call, both of us are going to be thinking about what we could have said better or what we did say really well. We're not going to be thinking about, oh, they did this, this or that. We're going to be self self critiquing ourselves. And that's fine, it's beautiful, but it gets into perspective that nobody is caring as much as I'm putting all of this importance onto whatever this specific thing is. Um, a lot of people do just kind of, they want these things not for themselves, but yeah, just for the, uh, the people around them. Uh, to prove something, to increase their perceived status, and for the temporary validation. But you know, obviously, that's just like you know, pleasure chasing. It's just temporary, right? Um, yeah. The only 
true fulfillment, yeah, it's like you said, yeah, doing things for yourself as opposed to doing them to prove to other people who don't really care. Because <laughs> you know what it is? They'll hear about it. They'll have a moment where they're like, oh, that's really cool. Anyway, what was that? <laughs> yeah. And then that's that. What was it like for you working um, with the Duffer Brothers? And I think you said you were working with Millie Bobby Brown. What was it like working with them? You don't have to go into specifics of what you were doing, but what was it like? And what was it? What were your main lessons that you learned from them? It's it's super cool. So I want to give this might be too that divisive, but I do want to give a shout out to. So I had multiple directors. Probably my favorite person I've ever worked with was my director on the first two episodes. His name is Nimrod. I'm gonna I'm gonna mispronounce his last name. I think Nimrod and Dali or something like that. He was by far my favorite person I've ever worked with, right? And the reason I bring that up is because the way he directed and the way the Duffers directed completely different it was like working on night and day sets and that's like the super cool lesson i got to learn is even when you're working on the same project it can be different on an episode to episode day-to-day -day basis which i think is really cool um but no they every you know why stranger things is such a good show every single person there loves what they're doing that was the thing that i i fell in love with the atmosphere they had there everybody was so kind everybody was so happy to be there and so just excited for the day and it's one of those things where in hollywood you do have a lot of fake people right and you'll be on sets where people aren't always excited about the material or they're being nice for the sake of being nice and having some every single person on that set was so genuine so down to earth and it was one of the most wholesome experiences i've i've ever had millie i think was very surprising to me in the sense of she was much more down to earth and much more thoughtful than i i thought not in the sense of like but more in the sense of like she was very thoughtful of everyone around her. She always took time to remember everybody's names. I don't know, I was very surprised because I went in there expecting it to be, you know, it's this child actor that has made a crap ton of money. They've only, in my opinion, obviously they've, obviously they've gone through their struggles like everybody else, but from the outside looking in, they've only gone through its success their whole life. They should be an entitled brat and they would have every reason to be an entitled brat. So I was very surprised by the fact that she wasn't. And I actually learned a lot from her. As a 20, I think I was 21 at the time, I was blown away that I was a 21 year old actor learning from this teenager. Um, there are some things that she would do that I still do before all of my tapes and when I'm on set to this day. And I specifically wanted to reference that because a thing that happens when people grow up is they start losing this curiosity and they start sometimes thinking that they know everything. And remembering that we can learn something from everybody, I think is the easiest way to one, stay humble and to two, always keep learning. So the fact that I was able to learn from Millie, I could learn from anybody that I, I talked to. And I think it shows that you never know everything. I think the best scene partner I've ever worked with was Matthew Modine, um, just because a lot of people undervalue, I think, those actors that are masters of getting things out of their scene partners. I think it's one thing to be a big showy actor that is really good at breaking down and having this intense vulnerability like present, but it also takes a special kind of actor to know how to facilitate that. And Matthew did just an incredible job of getting me there. And he did this great job of really like railing into me and really pushing me, really pushing me, really pushing me. Then after just being like, Hey, sorry about that. You did a good job. I was in awe listening to Tristan talk about Stranger Things. Honestly, I could listen to him all day. But now it was time to ask him the big question. The one I'd been waiting to ask him this whole time. I was super nervous. We've known each other for a little while now. <laughs> we're, we're pretty good friends. Uh, so I gotta ask, you know, all, all my friends can know I've been uh, a fan of Stranger Things for, for a really long time. Since season one. I've got a freaking 11 poster in my room. <laughs> what are the chances you could set me up that I can meet Millie Bobby? <laughs> oh gosh, honestly, 
probably a zero. Um, no. <laughs> you, you were pleasant on set. She's super cool. She m- probably remembers my name, but I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't really expecting anything, but how to got to shoot your shots sometimes, man. Oh, for sure. Thank you so much. I think that's pretty much everything. Was there anything else you wanted to say before we wrap up? One, so I can say that I do technically have one project that is supposed to be coming up soon. I actually am attached a series regular to this one, but it's not in the public sphere. At least until then, look out. There are some other stuff coming. Cool, you've got another show coming out. I definitely can't wait to see that. Hey, maybe maybe I'll I'll be able to see if I can get you on the show. That'd be pretty cool. Oh wow, that'd be crazy if you could see that. <laughs> I don't know if I could actually do that. I probably wouldn't have the pool for that, but that could be pretty cool. If you do, I will love you forever. I mean, I'll love you forever <laughs> anyway, but I'll love you extra hard. Uh, <laughs> that'd be cool. They'll be like, hey, hey, we need a cast. This character's best friend. What actor? <laughs> really good chemistry. And I'll be like, I don't know. You know I'm going to hold you to that, Tristan. <laughs> but in all seriousness, Tristan is probably one of the nicest and down-to-earth people that I've ever met, especially someone this successful. And if for some reason you haven't already, make sure you go and watch Stranger Things 4. And I'll leave a link to all of Tristan's socials, including his podcast and his YouTube channel, in the description. Thanks, guys.